This is a sports catastrophe production. <clears throat> hey there, Heather Holder. It's Jeff Cardano. Welcome you to another sports catastrophe on this day. And on this day, May the 18th, in the year 1971. One of the most shocking Cinderella stories in NHL history happened. Now you'd be thinking, wait a minute. How can the Montreal Canadiens 1971 squad be a Cinderella story? <laughs> well, there's a lot of context. So, let's go back to the 1970-71 season for context. So, there was a massive change in the NHL in 1970. Two new teams, the Buffalo Sabres and the Vancouver Canucks, were going to join the NHL. And so the NHL decided to put both Buffalo and Vancouver in the East Division, despite the fact that we all know Vancouver definitely is not in the eastern part of North America. So what they did was they decided to move the Chicago Blackhawks to the West after the embarrassment of the West Division, which was home to the six expansion teams in 1967. You know, the Blues, the Penguins, the Flyers, the Seals, the North Stars, and the Kings. So they decided for competitive balance to move Chicago to the West. Well, Chicago is Western United States. And they also said that in the semifinals, there would be crossovers. So basically, the top two teams in the East, after their playoffs, would face the top two teams in the West. East versus West, East versus West. And then we would have more a more competitive Stanley Cup final. Kind of pathetic, but whatever. So, yeah. So whoever won the 1 versus 3 East matchup would face the 2-4 West winner and West 1-3 versus East 2-4. Now, of course, you'd be thinking, well, that's stupid. It should be 1 versus 4, 2 versus 3. And I totally agree. If the 1 versus 4 format happened, then the Habs would have faced the New York Rangers in the first round, not the Boston Bruins. Boston was dominant. They were huge. They had a lot of goals. They they were big, bad Bruins. They had Esposito or Busek, you know, Cheevers at their prime. And, you know, they're the 1970 Stanley Cup champs. They're the division champs. So Montreal would have to face Boston. In game one, Boston won 3-1 at home. No big deal. But this is what makes it a big Cinderella story. Well, part of it for the Habs. The Habs were up against it. The Habs were down 5-1 in Game 2. And it looked bad for the Habs. But somehow, in some way, the Habs put up six straight goals to win the game 7-5. Two to have a split in Boston. Montreal won Game 3 at the Forum. Boston won Game 4 at the Forum. So 2-2. Two -two. Boston crushed Montreal 7-3 in Game 5. And it looked like it was over. But Montreal won 8-3 somehow in Game 6, and then 4-2 in, in Boston in Game 7, and the Habs were going to the playoffs. The Habs' next opponent would be the Minnesota North Stars, who had a big victory in the playoffs versus the St. Louis Blues, who were the two seed. Montreal couldn't take down Minnesota. They were down. And all that. Montreal only Montreal needed six games to take care of the North Stars. The North Stars won game two at the Forum, which was shocking enough, and then in game four at home. The Habs won games five and six and moved on to the finals. Moved on to the finals where they would meet the Chicago Blackhawks. The Blackhawks were the top team in the West. Well, almost unanimously. I mean, the team played in the tough East Division. Now they're in the West. They're crushing everyone. They crushed the Flyers in the fine powder in four straight. And in the semifinals, one of the great, the semi, great, greatest semifinals of all time, they actually took care of, well, the Blackhawks and Rangers went to game seven. There were three overtime games. The Rangers won game one in overtime, and then the Blackhawks won game five. They're up three, two. However, the Rangers needed a triple overtime goal by Pete Stamkowski to make it. Three games all, and then in Game 7, the Blackhawks won on home turf. 
So now comes the final between the Blackhawks and the Habitats. Normally they wouldn't meet each other in the finals, but the new format helped out. Game one saw the Blackhawks win in overtime on a goal by Jim Pappen. In game two, the Blackhawks won again 5-3. Goals by Bobby Hall, Chico Mackey, Jim Pappen, Lou Angotti. Well, Angotti got two. And it looked like Blackhawks were going to crush Montreal in the fine powder. However, at the four, Montreal won 4-2, thanks to uh, two Mahavlages, Pete and Frank, scoring goals. Frank with two, Pete with one. Corner YA with the other. Montreal won 5-2 in game four. Thanks to two goals by Cornway, eh? Peter Mahovlich, John Bellevue, and Guy Laporte, a young Guy Laporte, at that, with that. But the Blackhawks on home turf at Chicago Stadium wouldn't be denied. 2 0. Dennis Holland, Cliff Corral with goals, Tony Esposito with the shutout. However, the Habs survived. They were down 3 2 early. Well, in the, going in the third period, but goals by Frank and Pete Mahovlich made it 4 3. It's now time for Game 7. Montreal would be in Chicago. Both CBC and CTV would broadcast the game up north in Canada. So, it was huge. Now, of course, you may be asking, wait a minute. Get back to the Cinderella story. I did will. So, Montreal had a goalie controversy before the 71 playoffs. They had Rookie Fashion and Phil Meyer. Yes, they both would go on to play for other teams and be decently better for them. Fashion for the Kings and Meyer for the Atlanta Flames. However, somehow in some way, they both didn't get the main start in the playoffs. Why? Because of a unheralded six foot four goaltender who was drafted by the Boston Bruins, irony enough, next to before it got traded a few years later. Who played at Cornell, who was a great NCAA college star, who made six starts for the Habs in the 1971 season and won all six. It was six and zero. So they went with the hot hand, and Ken Dryden was there. Dryden would face Tony Esposito, Battle of the Legends. Chicago, so that's time for game seven. Chicago took the lead 2 0 on goals by Dennis Hall and Danny O'Shea, was it? Yeah, Danny O'Shea. So then, the Chicago felt good about themselves. However, Jacques Lemaire would make a 60-foot slap shot and somehow beat Tony Esposito to make it 2-1 for the Hawks. Later on, in the third period, Henri Richard Got a pass from Lemaire to make it 2-2. In the third period, Henri Richard made a spectacular move on Esposito, scored to make it 3-2 halves. The assist by Rajon Houle and Guy Lapointe. But you got to also realize that if you watch that Henri Richard goal in 1971, does he make a finger-pointing gesture or something? That was kind of weird. Kind of reminds me of the Olin Nolan thing at the All-Star Game in 97. But regardless, the Habs ended up shocking the world 3-2 and winning the Stanley Cup on Chicago's home ice. And Chicago thought they had it made. And that makes the 1971 Habs one of the greatest Cinderella stories of all time. Because let's face it, this team was supposed to get destroyed by the Boston Bruins in the playoffs. They got an easy opponent in the Minnesota North Stars in the semifinals. But yet, they took on the Blackhawks, and the Blackhawks looked like they were going to knock Montreal seven bells because they were a veteran team. But nope, didn't happen. Of course, coaching would have issues, both Chicago and Montreal. Chicago head coach Billy Ray was attacked for ex his excessive employment of Lou Ngotti and Eric Nesterenko in Game 7. Because Hall and Makita were left on the bench for extended periods in favor of Engadi and Nestorenko, even though that might have been a checking situation, it just wasn't there. Unfortunately, Rajon Houle would shadow Bobby Hall and do pretty well with that. Montreal would 
unfortunately have another reason why you're there in the Cinderella run. 1971, Al McNeil was the head coach. And unfortunately, Al McNeil got in deep trouble when he benched Henri Richard in Game 5 at the at Chicago Stadium. Richard would rip McNeil in the media, call him incompetent and a terrible coach. And was accused of favoring English-speaking players over the French players, especially in Montreal, of all places. El McNeil would lead the Haston Stanley Cup as a rookie head coach, and it looked like good. Unfortunately, though, the Montreal media and Andre Richard were too much, and Al McNeil was sent back to the AHL to coach, and Scotty Bowman was hired after the 1971 Stanley Cup win. I feel bad for Al McNeil, but, you know, it's Scotty freaking Bowman. So, anyway, your 1971 Montreal Canadiens were at center, Sean Bellyville, Andre Richard, Peter Mahovlich, Bobby Sheehan, remember guys, and Jacques Lemaire. Wingers were Mark Tartif, who would do much better in the WHA, Rajan Wolf, Yvonne Conway, Claude LaRose, Phil Roberto, Leon Rochefort, John Ferguson Sr., Chuck Lafley, and Frank Moblich. Defensemen, Jacques Laperriere, J.C. Tremblay, Guy Lapointe, Serge Savard, Terry Harper, Bob Murdoch, and Pierre Bouchard. Goalies were Ken Dryden, Rookie Fashon, and Phil Meyer. Now, Serge Savard did play a lot of regular season games, but was injured. And Phil Meyer wasn't dressed in the playoffs, but they were in the team picture, but not and Grave on the Stanley Cup because they didn't play in the playoffs. So Fashon was trying his backup. Lily, Larry Plo also played for the Habs, but he only played 19 games in the regular season, did not dress in the playoffs. So that's what happened. Anyway, what's also what's also crazy is that Al McNeil actually was a mid-season replacement for the 71 Habs. Claude Riol, R-U-E-L, actually was replaced after 23 games. And Al McNeil came up. He would coach 55 regular season games and the playoffs. But unfortunately, that was the end of him as tensions were running high, especially in French Canada, uh, with dealing with Andre Richard. And he deserved it. He deserved the hatred. That's all I'm going to say. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond. I do.